Ladies and gentlemen, do I have something interesting for you today? It's probably the biggest Easter egg that is given to us in the Black Ops Cold War beta. And if you can't read or can't look at a thumbnail, obviously what I mean by this is it's the return of Raul Menendez to Black Ops Cold War. Now, in this video, I'm going to give you the backstory of Raul Menendez and explain how exactly he can fit into the game. On top of this, this may answer one of the biggest questions questions ever in the Black Ops universe, at least the Black Ops campaign universe revolving around Frank Woods and Alex Mason. This is huge, huge for the game and the story moving forward. And this video is going to be all about explaining exactly what I mean by that. So I guess without further ado, I present to you the return of Raul Menendez. Be ready. So as you guys already know, Raul Menendez was the main antagonist of Call of Duty Black Ops 2 in two stories, in the year 1986 and in the year 2025. He also was brought back in Black Ops 4 in a completely different capacity as a bad guy there as well. We're not going to dive into that. If you want the full story of Raul Menendez, I have that linked down in the description and it'll be after the video. Uh, but this is just primarily going to be about his Black Ops 2 story and Black Ops Cold War story. Now, Raul Menendez was born on September 5th, 1986. 1963 in Nicaragua. And for the most part, he had a relatively normal family life, except for one big thing. His father, Jose Luis Menendez, was the leader of the Menendez drug cartel, running drugs and making millions upon millions of dollars. Now, on June 19th, 1973, an American burnt down the Menendez barn and inside his sister, Josefina Menendez. Now, Menendez's sister did not die in the fire, but disfigured, blind, and set to suffer for the rest of her life. Obviously, Menendez was angry. Now, since an American started the fire, that's who Raul Menendez mainly took out his anger upon. But after the death of his father, Jose Menendez, Raul Menendez takes over the drug cartel, and his next step is to bring his drugs to America, immediately making him a threat to the CIA, and the CIA begins to get involved. Now, as we know, Black Ops Cold War takes place in the early 1980s, and recently in the beta, they put it in a new map called cartel. The map takes place in Nicaragua, and obviously, the cartel that they are talking about is the Menendez cartel. And in fact, we find posters scattered throughout the map that say, Viva Raul Menendez. In other words, long live Raul Menendez. Now, to understand how this fits into the story, we first have to look at the timeline of Black Ops. So as far as the timeline that matters for this Raul Menendez timeline, the three games that matter are Black Ops 1, which takes place in 1968, and Raul Menendez isn't actually in that game, and then Black Ops Cold War, which the campaign takes place in 1981, and then finally Black Ops 2, which the campaign is split between the year 1986, when you're in the flashback, and 2025, which is the present day of that game. And that is where you see the older version of Raul Menendez that you're probably a lot more akin with. But... To fully understand this, we have to start where Raul Menendez wasn't, and that is with Black Ops 1 in the year 1968. Specifically on February 19th in a mission called Payback. At the end of this mission, Alex Mason is being attacked by Krevchenko inside of his compound, when Frank Woods comes to his rescue to take on Krevchenko. At this time, Woods and Krevchenko jump out the window together with an active grenade and you see an explosion. At this point, you assume Frank Woods is dead. Fast forward to the year 1986. Alex Mason is approached by Jason Hudson after, well after, the events of Black Ops 1. And he's asked to come back to the CIA to save Frank Woods. That is right, Frank Woods is not dead after all. In fact, he's being held captive in Angola. And when you go there, you find him inside of a shipping container, apparently taken hostage by none other than Raul Menendez. Now, what you don't immediately know right away is that throughout this period of time between the year 1968 and 1986, during these 12 years, Frank Woods was still working for the CIA. You find this out in various pieces of intel and discussions with Frank Woods throughout Black Ops. 
Ops 2. So this is where Black Ops Cold War comes in. As we know, the events of this game take place in the year 1981, exactly five years before we know Raul Menendez took Frank Woods hostage, or at least when Frank Woods was found. Also at this point, Alex Mason has not yet retired from the CIA, and obviously Frank Woods is doing his thing there as well. But where things get interesting with Raul Menendez is when we look at the new map put into the beta known as Cartel. Obviously, this is a post for the Menendez drug cartel, and on top of that, scattered throughout the map, as we discussed before, you can see maps that say Viva Raul Menendez, in other words, long live Raul Menendez. But this map goes way, way, way deeper than this. One thing that you probably didn't notice, even though you noticed the signs, is also scattered throughout the map is calendars. Now, if you specifically look at when these calendars are, it's not for 1981. It's for May 1982. Now, as we discussed earlier in the video, Raul Menendez didn't take over the drug cartel until the death of his father. Now, can you guess when his father died? May 21st, 1982. So the events of this map, what is going on right here is the takeover of the Menendez drug cartel by Raul Menendez. That is what's going on on this map. But believe it or not, it goes even further than this because off to the one side of the map, there is a house. Inside this house, if you look at the portrait, it appears to be pictures of the Menendez family. And on one wall, there is a portrait of Raul Menendez. But laying on the bed is a man with a picture beside him of what appears to be a girl, potentially Josefina, before the incident. As we know, the CIA planned to assassinate Jose Menendez on May 21st, 1982. And it just so happens that laying on the Menendez family bed is somebody assassinated. I am willing to bet that this map takes place on May 21st, 1982 at the death of Jose Menendez and the takeover by Raul Menendez. Now, it's gonna be interesting to see if Raul Menendez is actually in the campaign as it's going to be the youngest we have ever seen him because we don't see him until the year 1986 in Black Ops 2. Now, it's also important to note that there is a sign on the map that says in Spanish, the Menendez cartel is always watching. And I'm wondering if that symbol of the eye is going to be something that we see more and more throughout the campaign and maybe in Warzone as well. And I'm also curious to see how Raul ties in to with Perseus as well. Now, here's the one other thing that I will say about this. Since we know that Frank Woods is in the game, and since we know now that Raul Menendez is also going to play a part, I am wondering if by the end of the campaign, or maybe they'll make up this a part of the Warzone story, if we will finally get to figure out what happened to Frank Woods and how he got captured by Raul Menendez in Angola. This is something that I would love to see and it would fill in a big hole in the lore for Black Ops. But there is one more interesting thing about the map cartel. You see, as we talked about before, there are signs and a bunch of different things on walls pointing towards the Menendez drug cartel and specifically Raul Menendez. But on the one desk, there is a bulletin board that has a picture on it of something that you may find very familiar. That is a picture of Nuketown on the wall, specifically a picture of the yellow building from the original Black Ops 1 version of Nuketown. And what this tells us is that this may also be in the game. Now, if you really look at the picture, there are some things that don't match up. There's something big on the right-hand side of the yellow building, kind of looks like a palm tree or something along those lines that isn't normally there in the Nuketown map, which means we're probably going to be getting some new version of it as well. Now, I could make an entire video just talking about this. I don't know if that's something that you're interested in. If you want me to dive a little bit more into Nuketown, all you got to do to show me is simply hit that like button. But today, we dove into the background of Raul Menendez and how his takeover is going to be a part of the story of Black Ops Cold War. And I thought that was extremely cool. So as always, if you did enjoy the video, it is always appreciated if you do hit that like button. If you like what you see here, I try to do these stories about once a week revolving around the Call of Duty lore. So if you like this kind of thing, be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn notifications on, let me know what you think of this down in the comments, I thought it was a pretty cool thing to find out, and as always, I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, peace out. We are, we are rich
searching for the stars But we're making this to us